Hello everybody, you're listening to Black America. I'm your host, Pastor Alfred. Black America is a broadcast series that briefly highlights certain portions of books that I've written or I'm currently writing that are dedicated to inspire, inform, and celebrate the black community in America. For more broadcasts like this, as well as a series of broadcasts on a variety of different topics, that will all be a blessing to you. Go to PastorAlfred.com and make sure you subscribe. Today I'd like to tell you that a cornered mouse fights back. Now, one thing that I remember from the Tom and Jerry cartoons that I watched growing up, and interestingly, it's the main thing I remember is a particular concept, which is the, a cornered mouse fights back. I can't remember most of that particular episode of Tom and Jerry, but the message of a particular segment of that episode was that a cornered mouse will fight back. Now, for those of you who don't know, Tom is the cat and Jerry is the mouse. In that scene, Jerry was cornered, but you see, he had to fight back because it was either death or him fighting for his life. When you give somebody a situation where they are cornered and their backs are against the wall and they know they are about to be killed, what else is left for them to do but to fight back? I'm saying this because right now we are living in a day where the black community and the media and everybody is backing up white people into a corner. So it's like all white people are evil and bad no matter what they do. You see, you see a white man being successful and then you say that it's because of white privilege. You see, a white kid gets all A's, he succeeds, he passes his exams. Instead of it being said that it is because he studied, because he read, because he was a diligent student. No, it is because of white privilege. You see, no matter what a white person does now, the white person is condemned. You see, so what is happening is that White people are being backed into a corner. And sooner or later, they will have to fight back. And that means that we have to turn into racists. And that is what concerns me. Because right now, when you look at the media, a lot of stories, black people get away with a lot of things and accuse white people of any and everything. You see situations where a black man is selling drugs. He gets stopped by the police and then everybody is complaining about the manner in which the police is arresting him you see people skip over the fact that this is actually a criminal being apprehended they are now angry that the way that the criminal is being apprehended is too violent but you see in a lot of these situations the criminal has a gun and there's also the situation of the police not knowing if the criminal has a gun or not so you cannot expect the arrest to be full of courtesy and, and, and half class, especially when the black person is being violent. You see, so everything a white person does now has turned into a bad thing. And you see, people are so hungry to search out and find white racists that anything that a white person does is so scrutinized. White people now have to work on eggshells, especially around black people. And it also creates a situation where why will white people want to hire black people? You see, because you now have to work on eggshells. All the majority white employees now have to work on eggshells because any little thing that is done could be interpreted as racism. You know? The more this continues, the more a scenario is created where all white people will have to at some point become racist. Now we are living in a time where white people condemn white people. White people are quick to jump and criticize other white people when they are accused of anything racist, even though it is not racist. You see, like you have the instance of a white person, which this was um, a while back, a white person calling the cops on a black person whose daughter was selling lemonade or water or something of that nature. 
Now, the fact remains that what that little girl was doing, she was not licensed to do it. And some people are telling tales. Personally, I wouldn't call the cops over that. You see, a lot of reasonable people wouldn't do that. But the fact remains that that little girl, what she was doing was breaking the law. That phone call could have been made by anybody. And there is no proof that it was racially motivated. But everybody went with that. And that person's life and career was ruined. You know, it just like, for example, there was a scenario where somebody called the cops on a black family that was holding a barbecue, I believe, in a park or something. Now, that happens to be a situation where you cannot prove really because you cannot really go into people's minds to see their motives, whether it is racially motivated. Another thing is that even if it is, that is one instance, you cannot use that to group an entire race, you see. And there are so many angles of it. There are a lot of people who would not want barbecues to be done in public in a public park or in a place you see but a lot of people want to push that racism rhetoric that white people are racist so much that any little sign of racism is over amplified and it goes viral and it turns into memes and it goes on and on and on but this continuing and this going in the manner that it is going, it creates a situation where the white people now who are supporting it will end up becoming the racists in the future. And that future will soon come, you see. Because you must understand that the current white people who are supporting it now are people who are slaves of the media. They do not have minds of their own. Because if they do have minds of their own, they will not support it. They will not... do the bidding of the mainstream media and go out into condemning all white people and you see the concept of white privilege is always being talked about by other white people who are demonizing people who are whites you see those people are the people that you should be most careful for you see because these people are not rational whatever the media sells them they buy these are the same people who, when the tables turn, will be the most racist towards black people. And you must also think about the current black people who are being raised in a way that they are thinking that everything is the white man's fault. You see, black people, for example, in a school, when they happen to have um, low results or because of their not reading and not paying attention to their ac academics they have lower results than white kids or asian kids and things like that these young people are being told that it is because of racism you cannot look at the performance in society and see that asians are more successful than blacks white people are more successful than blacks and say it's because of racism when it is clearly an academic thing you cannot look at the percentage of black people graduating from high school and compare it with the percentage of other races graduating from high school and say that the reason why the percentage of black people graduating from high school is so low is because of systematic racism or structural racism you see when you teach that and you have these young people thinking that way, you are creating a generation of black people who will never know that actually they should read, they should study, that it's a matter of them reading and studying and then they will pass their exams. Now they are not looking at it as it's a matter of them reading and studying and then they will pass their exams. They are looking at it as it's a matter of racism. The reason that so many black people are not graduating from high school is because of racism. The reason that so many black people are not succeeding in this and that and the other is because of racism. 
everything is blamed on racism so yeah you now have a generation of black people who never do what is right they, they don't even know to do what they should do they don't even know the value of hard work because they are told that everything that happens to a black person that is not good is because of racism you see when you can look at your results in school and see an f and instead of blaming it on the fact that you didn't read you didn't study and putting your head to your books and studying so that the next time that f will be an a you are being told that that is racism that it, that you got an f because of structural racism you see that is actually going to keep black people down you see the truth of the matter is that when programs are created for the black community and sadly they are often pushed by black people these programs actually make things worse because they are pushed forward by racists who hate white people so much and you know the thing white people can see white people can see what is happening they are not blind they are not buying into a lot of the foolishness it is the ones that are buying into it as a result of what the mainstream media are telling them that you should be careful of because later everything is going to even out especially as i've said a cornered mouse fights back when it gets to that point where every single thing a white person does is racism and wrong and bad you see which is actually the concept of white privilege white privilege makes every white person a racist no matter what they do they are just racist because of the color of their skin that is what white privilege does white privilege makes every white person guilty of racism whether they have done anything or not that is what white privilege have done so even the concept of white privilege the proposal of the concept of white privilege is racism in itself when black people are racist it is not checked you see it is okay for black people to be racist towards white people but it is not okay for the other way around you see turning the tables of racism is not solving the problem of racism back in the day it was white people who were being racist to black people but now black people are being racist to white people that is not an improvement the tables were just turned you see and this is not going to end well for black people that is the truth of the matter i've said a cornered mouse will fight back and the cornered mouse will fight back concept is something that we can even see in the art of war you see sun Tzu said something in the art of war and he said that when you surround an army make sure that you leave room for escape otherwise the army will fight back and there have been situations where armies were surrounded and because they were surrounded with no way of escape what did they have to do they had to stand and fight and in standing and fights fighting they most of the time ended up fighting and even killing the people that surrounded them or at least doing a lot of damage you know imagine if you are leading an army and you surround an enemy army and you are like okay you you are happy that you, are, you have the victory and the people you have surrounded because they know you are going to kill them they have no choice but to fight with all their might a cornered mouse fights back when they fight back you begin to lose men however if you leave a way of escape what happens is that they are already defeated their morale is already low so as they are in that defeated mood a lot of them will try to escape and by leaving a way of escape and them running you see they are they have no reason to stand and fight they are they know that they have lost they are retreating in that mode you can kill them as they are running and the ones that stay behind it is actually easier to defeat a surrounded army that way by leaving a way of escape but you if you give them no choice if they are completely surrounded they will have to fight back and it's just like if if you are in a lion's den you see if you are thrown into a lion's den and you have a sword even though in your mind no matter what happens the lion is going to finish you off you see you have a sword you have a knife you are still going to use it because you have no choice now if you had a way of escape will you stand there and want to use the knife on the lion no you will turn and run and in your turning and running that is actually a chance for the lion to pounce on you you see so it is that same concept however even if 
the lion still defeats you when you are with a sword and you stand and face it at least you will injure the lion and this applies to anybody you see that is the concept of a cornered mouse fights back why people are being cornered and backed into is a certain very inconvenient spot and it's the people that are white and are helping and are saying the same rhetoric that the mainstream media is pushing about white people that will be the first people to grab a knife and start fighting back and when they come out in force it's going to be terrible because right now the race war as we see it is actually pushed by by only um, black people one side wants the war one side is actually throwing all the stones right now and that is the black side if white people now pick up stones and publicly start throwing stones back publicly starts going at blacks it will become something of sound you are now dealing with a generation of black people who feels that every single thing a white person does is racist you see you can see the case of the Covington um, Catholic high school kids when you watch the full clip you will see some people who call themselves Hebrew Israelites who were actually black people who are actually black people you see and they deceive themselves that they are Hebrew Israelites and all of that you see they are trying to claim everybody else's heritage apart from their own and what they were doing was they were shouting out racial slurs and all kinds of insults towards the Covington high school kids in that same video in the full version of that video that went viral you see so we see the mentality of a lot of black people those people just were attacking those high school students because of the color of their skin so now the white man is being condemned because of the color of the, his skin this thing will create a bigger problem in the future because at a point white people will fight back right now they are not right now white people are scared because they are afraid of being called racist but the time will come when white people will not care because it's like whether i do anything or not i'll be called racist anyway because of the color of my skin and you see when things start beginning to escalate then they will not really become racist then we will then see white racism and we already have black racists and black racist ideology being spread all over the place and it's being normalized as something that should be accepted you see so that versus meeting with white racism is going to create a clash and a real big mighty problem in america what the mainstream media has actually done it ha is that it has made a lot of black people racist and it makes them think that racism is okay their attitude towards whites condemning whites is okay we now have a scenario where for example in harvard university harvard now discriminates against asians because agents have a very high academic performance you see so agents do better than whites hispanics and blacks academically when it when it comes to the population of people in america and people who apply to harvard so now just like some companies do they now have a quota and a percentage of people that they accept so it's like we must accept so and so percentage of people that are black we must accept so and so percentage of people that are mexican and we can only accept so and so percentage of people that are whites and asian you know so it has created a situation where even though majority of the agents who, who apply qualify because of these quotas they end up creating scenarios where black people with lower scores enter harvard and asians do not enter harvard even though their scores are higher you know there are those who are talking about um, a new system that harvard created that makes acceptance not being based on academics alone but being based on also um 
vague concepts you know and things that have to do with likability and social this you know and all of that you know there's also the importance of extracurricular activities and all of that so you see in those kind of things they they have created new things to excuse and make it legal for them to actually accept a low number of Asians in spite of their academic achievements now what this does is that it has created a, a scenario where when you see a black man in harvard you now look at him as ah he only got into harvard because of the color of his skin so what does a black man's graduation from harvard mean when a black man comes to apply for a job and he has his degrees from harvard you have to, you now look at him as somebody that ah he only got into harvard because of his the color of his skin and because of all these programs that the government does and harvard does and all these um guys do to support blacks just because of the color of their skin you see so you are not looking at him as intelligence so you can now see a scenario now arising where a white man's harvard degree is more powerful than a black man's harvard degree now isn't this the worst sort of scenario possible when it comes to race this is now creating a, a situation where there is actually now racial injustice but it's based on the obvious it is the outcome of that scenario where you are accepting people because of the color of their skin when you are accepting people into harvard because they are black then it degrades a black man's harvard degree you see you cannot respect it because it's like he got in because he was black but a white man comes in you now know that ah this guy must be really intelligent because they are trying to stop the number of white people who get into harvard so it's even more difficult for a white man to get into harvard now so you now look at his own degree even though it is from the same school you now look at his own degree differently so that creates a worse scenario for black people than ever before it is just like this affirmative action when you help black people graduate from high school when they do not academically qualify you create a situation where there are a lot of black graduate dummies so when you see a black man coming for a job and he has his graduation from high school and all of that you still are skeptical you see it is different from a white man because you see with the white man you know that there was no affirmative action on his side so his high school degree is based on his own merits but when you see a black man's high school degree you know that this is probably affirmative action so that also creates a sad scenario not to mention that since these people are being pushed forward to graduate even though they have no scholastic achievements or merits you see that can justify their passing in the first place they actually perform less when it comes to the professional world so what does that do to the image of the black man in general affirmative action is the worst thing to ever happen to black people if a white man sees a quarter or just a tiny tiny minimal portion of the rhetoric that black people say every day about white people if the situation was flipped and a white person was to say that about a black man the whole world will stop we see such situations over and over again and what i'm saying is that that day will soon come where the world will stop where white people will now be like well whether i say something or not i'll be called a racist but i won't let that stop me I have to fight back. I can't be condemned and keep on being persecuted because of the color of my skin. You see? And when white people stand up, since we have black people who are programmed in such a manner, they are going to call their rising up racism. And then it's actually going to create real racism and a big push and a big fight back. You see? So that is something that if you have any brain in your head, you should not want to happen. You see, white people are going to win in that war, and black people are certainly going to lose. It is something that there is no question about it, it is just a fact. 
I would like to leave you with a very important scripture. Let's open our Bibles to the book of Mark chapter 12 verse 31. I read using the King James Version of the Bible. And the second is like namely this, thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. There is none other commandments greater than these. Praise the Lord. You see, it's very important that we understand this. We love our neighbors as ourselves. A lot of black people are now walking in hate. They do not love their neighbors as themselves. And by walking in hate, they are making themselves vulnerable and creating a situation which in the future will be detrimental for black people. Black people are right now sowing seeds of hate which they will harvest in the future by condemning everything a white person does by being so racist towards white people by talking this nonsense of white privilege you see by saying that the white man is bad the white man is evil all of these are seeds of hate which will germinate in the future if black people could begin to love their neighbor as themselves you see a lot of all these problems will not arise these seeds that will yield negative harvest for the black community in the future would not be so. So that is where I'm living things at. It is important that we love one another. I would like to say a prayer for all of you under the sound of my voice. In the name of Jesus, I command every sickness to leave your body. I command every disease to leave your body. I command the healing power of God to flow into your body in the name of Jesus Christ. Every demon that is under the sound of my voice, I command you to get out of everyone that you are in now in the name of Jesus. Everyone that you are tormenting right now, I command you to leave that body in the name of Jesus. They are whole and set free in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. So, a lot of you have now been set free. I celebrate with you. I give God all the glory, honor, and praise. I would like all of you listening who have not given your life to Christ or who have not received the Holy Spirit to go to pastoralfred.com and make sure you subscribe. And while there, it's important that you click the salvation prayer link in the main menu. When you do that, you will see the page where there is a salvation prayer a prayer for you to say if you want to give your life to christ and a prayer for you to say if you like to ask god to give you the gift of the holy spirit it's important for you to have the gift of the holy spirit so go to the sites click on the salvation prayer link in the main menu and say the prayers there that's it for today thank you and god bless you